Hey everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to measure the circumference of the earth with a stick. Okay, so let's get going. This is about Eratosthenes, of course. A poet, a mathematician, but the guy that is most noted for measuring the circumference of the earth the very first time. That's Eratosthenes you see there on the right, the guy in the red bathrobe. Uh, and there's a guy in the blue bathrobe. We don't really know who he is. And they're looking at a globe, and I'm pretty sure that's a dog on that globe. Can you see it? You see what I'm looking at? The dog, that is a dog on that globe. I swear that looks just like a dog to me. Uh-oh. Yep. All right. That's computer-generated imagery for you. Let's get back to the story. Eratosthenes was living in Alexandria, uh, Egypt, and he knew of about a well in a city about 500 miles south of him where every year on the summer solstice, the sun would be reflected in the water at the bottom of that well, which meant that the sun had to be directly overhead. Now, Eratosthenes knew how far it was from where he lived to the, to the well because they measured that every year. I don't know why they measured it every year. It seems like it would have been easier just to write it down. But they anyway, Eratosthenes reasoned that since he knew um, that distance um, and if he could measure the angle to the sun at solar noon where he lived, he would then be able to calculate the total circumference of the earth. Cool. This is how he did it. He reasoned that since he knew that location of the well, all he needed to do was make a measurement when the sun was directly overhead. That would be for him the summer solstice, which uh, it, it, and it so happened that the well was right on the Tropic of, Can of Cancer. The other thing he needed was a stick in the ground at his location and an old Greek guy to measure the length of the shadow. Now, if you have the, the height of the stick and the length of the shadow, you then know what angle alpha is. And if you know what angle alpha is, that's the same thing as alpha that describes the two points on Earth that we're looking at. Now all you need is a little simple arithmetic, some basic geometry, and voila, you can come up with the circumference of the Earth. Just that simple. We wanted to make some observations and duplicate Eratosthenes' method of doing this. I wanted to do it at two different uh, latitudes. So I got the uh, solicited some help out of Bob the Science Guy, and I made measurements here in East Tennessee at a latitude of about 36 degrees north. Bob made his measurements in northern Michigan at about 45 degrees, 44 degrees uh, north latitude. And, of course, we got our distances to the equator uh, simply using Google Earth. And what we did for uh, measurement devices, Bob came up with the, uh, the little rafter square arrangement there in the lower left corner. It's, it's fairly small. You might question how much accuracy you could get from that. Frankly, it was surprising how accurate it was. I did two different measurements. I used a 24-inch dowel on a piece of plywood so that I could plot the sun shadow and see what path it made. I also used a 73-inch uh, tall aluminum pole. And in the bottom center picture, you can see when I was actually making the uh, solar noon measurement. So that's what we had for equipment. Wait for it. Here come the results. Now, I'm not going to bore everybody with all of these numbers. You're free to stop the video, pause it, and, uh, and go through all of this stuff. Let me just cut straight to the chase. Earth's circumference is known to be 24,901 miles. Our measured circumference is 24,874 miles. That's less than a 30-mile difference. That's less than a tenth, uh, I mean about a tenth of a percent error. I would call that a winner. Absolutely. 
So how do you do the calculations? Well, it's really pretty simple. Using a, uh, a trigonometric method, the arctangent of the shadow length divided by the stick length equals the angle alpha. And 360 degrees divided by alpha in degrees times the distance between the two points gives us the circumference. Not hard to do, but that would have been impossible for Eratosthenes to do because trigonometry hadn't been invented yet. But there's an alternate method, and I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So there have been some questions about how a guy like Eratosthenes could have made these calculations at a time before uh, trigonometry was uh, had uh, been invented. So uh, it turns out that we can do this very, very simply. We can do it geometrically. What I've done is I've taken a piece of paper and I have constructed a replica of the measured sun angle uh, from the equinox where this side of the triangle represents the length of the shadow that's the actual length of the shadow divided by two and this side represents the height of the stick again that's the actual height divided by two so now what I have is the representation of angle alpha that we were looking at on the diagrams. The next thing that I need to do, this represents a chord of the circumference of, of the earth and I need to mark that on a circle, any circle. I could do that on a piece of paper. I could do it in the dirt if I needed to. This doesn't have to be a piece of paper. It could be three sticks. You could do, it, you could do this a thousand ways. The process is very simple. I take the vertex of this angle alpha, I put it right at the center point of that circle, and then I mark the angle. Boom, boom. That's these two lines. Perfect match for what we measured. So we're done with that. Now what we've got to know is what percentage of the entire circumference is this chord length here. The way we do that is with a pair of dividers. Now these things date back to the Egyptians. The, the Greeks certainly would have had them too. I know that the latitude here is roughly 36 degrees. In other words, this is going to be about 10% of the total circle. So I decided just to arbitrarily try this, setting the dividers at those, at those points. And then I stepped it off all the way around the circle, like so. And you can see all the dots I made all the way around. And when I came back to this end, ended up right there. There's that last dot. It's very, very close. So for all intent, we can say that this is 10% of the circumference of the earth. And I know that this distance is 2,466 miles. That's from here to the equator times 10, 24,660 miles. I'd say that's pretty good for a guy with nothing more than a stick, a pair of dividers, a couple of pieces of paper. Now there's a discrepancy in the elevation of the sun, and let me explain what I'm talking about. The triangle on the right shows you a two-scale representation of the measurements we made. My measurements at, at position A, which is 36 degrees north latitude, gave me a sun angle of 54 degrees, while Bob at position B saw the sun at an angle of 45 degrees. When we draw that out, you can see what the problem is. The sun is at two radically different elevations. Well, that won't work. On the other hand, if we draw the curvature of the earth in, 
again to scale, you'll note that from my 36 degree north latitude position with a 54 degree measured sun angle, the total of those two numbers is 90 degrees. Now the sun really is 93 million miles away. It's not 3,500 miles up in the air. It's 93 million miles away. And for over these short distances, that means that the total, those, the total of those two angles should be 89.998 degrees. You can't use this method to uh, determine how far it is to the sun. It takes way too much precision. And it's, it's not possible to do it that way. But you shouldn't get the result that we saw when we tried to model it as a flat earth. There's also a solar track discrepancy. If the sun was truly uh, at a low altitude and orbiting over the earth in a circle, the shadow it cast could not form anything other than an arc. It would have to be an arc, not a straight line. But that's not what happens. You get a perfectly straight line. You can see the points that I marked throughout the day, and you can do this yourself any day of the week. Over about a three-hour period there, uh, you see those points form a perfectly straight line. So what did we learn? We found out that the technique used by Eratosthenes was remarkably accurate. We're able to get within a tenth, uh, about a tenth of a percent of the known value. We didn't have to have any complex math to, to do this, just simple geometry. Um, and you get just about exactly the same answer you get with rigorous trigonometric calculations. We also found out that without taking the Earth's curvature into account, the measurements uh, <coughs> require the sun to be at two different elevations at the same time. That's obviously impossible. And, of course, that shadow uh, traces a perfectly straight line, and it's exactly why an equatorial mount works with a camera or a telescope that could not and will not work if the sun is in a low orbiting uh, position over the, over the surface of the Earth. It just is not possible. So what do we conclude? Well, the Earth is really 24,900 miles in circumference, just like you've always been told. It isn't flat. In fact, I'm pretty sure it looks just exactly like this. So there you have it, folks. Now, if you liked the video, and I hope you did, please hit like and subscribe. And uh, I promise you'll see some more of these. So take care now. Hey, dog. No digging. Let me tell you, I've, we've been through this before. No digging. Not, don't be digging over there either. You got holes all in this thing. You got to stop it. Hey! Hey!